I am trying desperately not to get ahead of myself, but we have played six matches in the league since last episode, one in the cup, and the conclusion that I have come to is we're pretty damn good. <laughs> And welcome back, everyone, to episode number 65 of The American Dream. I am Mr. Cellophane. I hope you've been enjoying the series so far. If you have, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, please and thank you. In today's episode, we have the first two-thirds of a C.S. Herediano triple header. We've got them in the quarterfinals of the Central American Cup, and then we drew them in round two of the Costa Rican Cup. That's coming tomorrow but as i mentioned we played seven matches since the last episode the first on the road against sporting it was the first of back-to-backs and a great pass around the side by edward lopez finds juan diego secaria for the goal one nil was the final score we rattled off 21 shots seven of them on goal walter nieto was fantastic in goal for sporting but ultimately it wasn't enough because his team could not solve hussein buhemi we then met up with them at home in the first round, well, the quarterfinal of the Costa Rica Cup, our first round. And Lescano starting in goal, proving that he ain't the solution for us. More on that later. Sporting taking a 1-0 lead. We would get one back. Ball from Marrera in the middle. Cordero poking it past Nieto to tie things up at 1 in the 41st minute. Second half, though, Sporting would once again reclaim the lead. Beautiful cross in Castillo. Rojas gets over the defender, putting it past Lascano. 2-1 Sporting. Bacar would send the ball into the middle. Cordero. Finding Akista cutting into the box to make it 2-2. And then finally, in the 88th minute, a ball sent long. One to Alejandro Brand. Fed up the middle to Cordero. who chips it past Nieto to give us the 3-0 victory. Moving on to the semifinals of the Cup against Herediano. I guess I kind of spoiled that by mentioning we had a triple header. But, oh well. So, because our choice of backup keeper in Alexander Lascano proved to be a colossal mistake, he truly did look god-awful in that match. We wanted to shore up the position. The team also wasn't very happy. They came to us immediately after the game and said, we need more depth at goalkeeper. So, we went out and picked up Diego Rivas. You will be absolutely shocked to find out that the 34-year-old netminder came to us via Herediano. Because again, the best way to success is to weaken your opponents. $235,000 we did have to spend, but I feel a lot more confident with Rivas in goal than I was with Lascano. I guess that's proof that you shouldn't marry the first girl you date. Back home against Punta Arenas in the league, Jean-Baptiste would put them up 1-0. Not a lot that the goalkeeper could do about that, and it made me wonder about the position in general. But a ball into the middle, the Cordero from Edward Lopez made it 1-1, and then in the 82nd minute, Esteban Cordero would lay one in from the penalty spot. 2-1 Zaprisa, your final score. We remain unbeaten in the league. A trend we look to continue on the road at A.D. Sarchi, and it took a while, but a corner header from Daniel Coronel would prove to be all that we needed. A.D. Sarchi managing just a single shot on Hussein Buheni, who had another clean sheet. We managed 10, put five on target. Coronel's, though, the only one that hit pay dirt. One nil is still a win. But admittedly, I was beginning to feel like our team had lost their magic. Against Grezia, though, we seem to have found it back. Another near-post corner header for Daniel Coronel made it 1-0. Duarte, ball around the side. Bacar into the middle. Secaria all alone beating Karate to make it 2. And then we would add a third. Edward Lopez, Bacar to Duarte. Valverde with a shot from 23 yards out. 3-0, Saprisa. Grezia would get one back in the 79th minute. Tiago with the ball in the middle, finds Reyes, powers it through Buhene, but 3-1, a much more emphatic victory for El Monstero, and our winning streak continues. So we would wrap up this stretch of games before returning to continental play with two, yep, two, both in the league, one home, one away against newly promoted Santa Ana. We took it to them barely 
got through, however, William Ramirez finally scoring in the 65th minute to be the difference in the first. But even though we took essentially half the number of shots in the second match on the road at Santa Ana, we took it to them. Took a 3-0 lead into the locker room. Goals by Esteban Cordero, Vitan Tusha, and Freddy Gonzalez. Calvin Ofori would add one in the 58th minute. A comfortable 4-1 victory. Christian Alfaro getting one back in the 63rd, but it was far from enough. So 11 matches into the opening stage. We are halfway through. 10 wins, 1 draw. 31 points. We have a nice 10-point cushion over Alo Halense. 12 over Cartagena. It's the only team that managed to take points off of us. I think we are cruising to our third, fourth, fifth consecutive grand final appearance. But our focus turns to the Central American Cup, the first of two matchups against Herediano in the quarterfinal. If we win this tie, like we talked about in yesterday's episode, we guarantee a spot in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. We are going to have to play without Edward Lopez. He is on his way to Nicaragua. It's an international break because reasons. Maybe it's the database. Maybe it's just CONCACAF being difficult. Buhemi is going to get the start and goal. Our back four is going to be Hichim Bakar, Freddy Gonzalez, Daniel Coronel, and Hugo Cordero. Alejandro Braun is going to be paired up with Valverde in the midfield. It's going to be Vitan Tusha on the left, Kelvin Ofori on the right. Kiros is going to get the start at the 10. Diego Moreira coming back from an injury. We want to make sure that he is fully healed for the away leg in a week. And that means Esteban Cordero is going to be the striker this afternoon. Sadly, though, Akista is upset for being left out of the squad. Hopefully, I'll have an opportunity to explain to him exactly what is going on in that situation. Herediano, having lost three of their last five, only one victory in recent memory. They are coming in not on... They're going the other way. We're on the rise. They are definitely on their way down. And I cannot believe that this was potentially a team that we were thinking about joining when we had the opportunity to leave Vancouver FC three seasons ago. Coronel is part of a five-man wall in front of Vargas' attempt. We have just played about three minutes. He's going to go for it, but Buhemi is going to say no and defends that top corner very well. But a corner opportunity for Herediano, which Perigini is going to take. Looking back post, Valverde popping it up. Ceballos. Knocking it down. He still got it along the edge of the box. Hugo Cordero, though, excuse me, Esteban Cordero, able to get in there and throw that one out. It will be a Herediano throw, but that's okay. We were able to clear the immediate danger. Not a lot of activity so far in this first half. Shimura, though, going to send it long. Gonzalez will nod it down looking for Kiros. It'll ultimately come to Esteban Cordero. He'll play it back. Hichim Bakar just holding up play for a little bit as the team sets up in front of him. Up the left wing. Vitan Tusha pushes it past one man. Into the middle. He's got Kiros. Could not penetrate the box, however. So he's going to have to retreat and look for another option. Ceballos picking it off of the foot of Freddy Gonzalez. But Hugo Cordero getting it back. Kiros to Esteban Cordero. Fed out to the left. Bakar cutting it inside. Bakar tries to dribble his way through. Unsuccessful, but Alejandro Brand will win it back. Freddy Gonzalez, a hub for Valverde. Up the middle, Tusha with a shot past Shamaro, but it will go wide. Herediano not getting a ton of opportunities here on our pitch. We, however, have not taken advantage of the chances that we have gotten so far. And we need to do that because I fear that Herediano is going to be uh, just that little bit stronger and a little bit hungrier when they return home in a week. So we need to have a nice cushy lead to guarantee our spot in the semifinal of the CONCACAF Central American Cup. Coronel playing it ahead. Kiros out wide. Ofori gets past one man, but Ceballos able to take over. Azafefa back out wide. Alionov to Vargas. Two men on him. Ofori will knock it free. Cordero back for Coronel. Into the middle. Alejandro Braun. Kiros ahead. Cordero feeds Tusha in between the two defenders, picking up his fourth goal of the year, and Saprisa takes the 1-0 lead. Not a bad way to end that first half. In stoppage time, Vitan Tusha picking up the goal, his fourth of the season. We're doing a good job with possession. We can still improve. We're giving the typical team talks 
as we look to make no changes heading into this second half. 11 to 1, the shots on goal favoring Saprisa. Looking at the XG story, massively favoring Saprisa. That point zero three that Hereniano has, they picked up in the first three minutes of the match. That was off of that free kick that was parried away by Buhemi. Ceballos controlling it through the midfield, dropping it back, intercepted by Cordero. He'll lay it back for Ofori. Coronel, Braun ahead. Kiros, can he push it forward? Yeah, but he's going to go around the side of Eton Tusha, who now has the brace, his fifth of the year. Saprisa two, Herediano nil, except he was off side. Unbelievable. I thought that was a good goal. Doesn't even go to VAR. They just made the call right there on the pitch. So I guess it wasn't nearly as close as I thought it was. Herediano in control, but can't really get it out of their own third. As a FIFA to Hernandez. Marked well. Vargas sending it across. Valverde gets in the way of that, but as a FIFA will take over again. Moyano. Suarez toward Perez. Gets past Freddy Gonzalez. Perez will shoot from just outside the box. It's his first goal, and what a turn of fortunes. Instead of 2-0, it's now 1-1. Freddy Gonzalez and his missed interception are to blame for that one. And another free kick. Perez going for it again. This one, though, will clip off of the bar and go out. We've got 20 minutes or so remaining in this match. Vitan Tusha is going to come out. He's a bit tired. William Rodriguez coming in. Valverde will be spelled by Audrey Castro. Freddy Gonzalez, after that mistake, he will be replaced by Carlos Barantes as we make a triple change in the 71st minute. 1-1 one, one, your score. This is not the result we were looking for. And Herediano trying to get more. But Coronel will win it back at the edge of our 18. Played back out Cordero. Castro up the right wing. Ofori looking to move it into space. Still with it. Playing it ahead. Oh, what a pass through to Cordero. Esteban Cordero chips Shimoro for his 10th of the year. And it's 2-1. What an absolute beauty of a pass by Ofori. The vision to put it into space, knowing that Cordero would get there. And Cordero making Herediano pay in the 78th minute with his 10th goal of the year. Double digits already, and we are still in the month of September. Montero back for Azafefa as Herediano looks to try to get that goal back. Ceballos. Suarez, surrounded by Saprisa jersey, still able to get it free, but the pass ultimately picked off by Barantes. Ramirez will play it to Andre Castro. Looking the right wing, cannot get it to Ofori. Not the greatest choice of pass as Arenano takes back over. Azafefa, Montero, tries to get it to Ceballos, picked off by Ramirez, quickly to Cordero. Quiros into the middle and into space. Ofori, he will put it home. His 10th of the year, and Saprisa with a 3-1 lead, but that's not going to count. They're going to say he was offside, and they're not going to show the highlight because they know they were wrong. Goal kick for Shimoro. 85 minutes have been played. He's going to look to send it into the Saprisa end. One by Quiros, Cordero, into the box, Ramirez can't put it past Shamoro, making the save, putting it out behind for a corner. So all is not lost. We still have an opportunity to restore our two-goal lead, or the two-goal lead we should have had the first time when the first goal was called back. Coronel can't win it, but it comes to Cordero. Back for Ramirez. Across. Oh, Kelvin Ofori charging in from the edge of the box. There's his 10th. Second time's a charm. It's 3-1. We are out shooting Herediano 18 to 3. We've managed 10 shots on target. And once again, we are making the goalkeeper look good. Although, honestly, not very impressed with the 6.6 .6 rating won by Kevin Shimoro. At least Hassan Buseni had a 6.7. Vitan Tusha opening things up just before the half. Esteban Cordero, Kelvin Ofori making it 3 3 1. Your final, a great aggregate lead to take into the match at Herediano. And it's a good thing, too, because we are going to be met in the second leg with the same issue we had in the second leg last year, and that is international duty. This match, we are not going to have Steven Aquista, Hugo Cordero, Andre Castro, Freddy Gonzalez, Carlos Barantes. We're going to have any center backs left? Jorge Valverde, Jose Diego Secaria, Diego Moreira. Edward Lopez, Michael Sambataro. Yeah, we are uh, screwed.
Okay, all is not lost because there are a ton of recognizable names in our starting 11. It's when we get to the bench that things get a little bit dicey. Diego Rivas, though, making his continental debut for Saprissa. He is going to be in goal. Our back four will consist of Heach and Bakar. Esteban Morales, we've talked about him. He's made an appearance in a couple of previous episodes. A nice, young, defensive player. He'll be paired in the middle with Daniel Coronel. Our own Vieira is going to get the start as our right back. Alejandro Brand will pair up with another youngster in Steven Alpazar, who was out on loan last year. He rejected a loan deal to go back out this year, so he's sticking around with our U19 side. Our front four is somewhat, somewhat... Standard. We've got Vitan Tusha on the left. We've got Kelvin Ofori on the right. Esteban Cordero at the striker. And at the 10, he played in the last match. It's Fabrizio Quiros. Let's hope that our makeshift team can hold it together long enough to get past Herediano and into the semifinals of the CONCACAF Central American Cup. A berth in the semifinals guarantees a spot in the Champions Cup competition coming up beginning in February. If for whatever reason we do not, we will be dropped into the Continental Places playoff and we will have an opportunity to earn a spot there. I'd much rather get the automatic berth that comes with getting through to the semifinals. Please and thank you. Not a lot of activity in the first 20 minutes, however. Three shots on goal combined. Two for Herediano, one for us. But the first highlight is for us. So Fori header on, save made, clearance made, and danger averted. But a great opportunity for Ofori to put us ahead 1-0 that we just could not take advantage of. Daniel Coronel. In the middle, Alejandro Brand spins, puts in the box. Ofori is there into the middle and dragged wide by Vitan Tusha. Another perfect chance. Of course, it was partially blocked, so it's going to be a corner kick that Alejandro Brand is going to take. Little bit short, so Azafefa will deal with that and play it out for Saprisa throw. But the last five shots on goal of the match have gone Saprisa's way, and we are putting the pressure on Herediano on their pitch in this first half. Alejandro Braun off of the free kick. Edge of the box, Cordero. Plays it to Tusha. Back for Cordero. He'll drive it and tuck it inside the far post. His 11th of the year. Tusha to Cordero. It's 1-0 Saprisa. That was some power from the left foot of Esteban Cordero, and we've taken a 4-1 aggregate lead, looking for more. Corner sent in. Vieira will play it back out for Hichim Bakar. Drops it to Ofori, edge of the box. Bakar once again, looking to play it in the middle. It's Ofori, and Ofori says, you've got your 11th, I've got mine. 2-0 on the night, 5-1 on aggregate, and Saprisa just blowing this tie open at Herediano. 45 minutes in the books, and it took a little bit, but after the 30-minute mark, it became all Saprissa. Cordero and Ofori each scoring their 11th goals of the season to put us up 5-1 on the tie. And at this point, it's nearly a foregone conclusion as Alianov coming in for Herediano. Ofori in the corner, looking back post Vitan Tusha. Can't win it. It was Alianov just onto the pitch, clearing that away, but it's picked up by Hichimba Carr. Looking for Ofori. Can't win that header. Azafefa doing a nice job on defense. And Perez looking to move it ahead for Herediano. Up by four on the tie with less than 45 minutes to go. It feels like we are assured that spot in the semifinals, which means we will have gotten deeper in this competition than we did the year before. And we're seeing year-on-year progress all over. And if we can do that, then we can get deeper in the CONCACAF Champions Cup as well. So far, not bad. From our team of starters slash U19 players. If the ball cleared away, Ofori will track it down. He'll wait for some help before carrying up the far sideline. Can he dipsy do past the man? Instead, he lays it off to Vitan Tusha. Moving it back out wide. Tusha has three men shadowing him. Back for Bakar. Splits the defense in the middle. Cordero pushed down by Kuhn. Penalty will be awarded. Cordero with the opportunity to score his second on the night and put this one out of reach beyond a shadow of a doubt. And he does. Beating Alvarez to his left. 12th goal of the year. 3-0, 6-1. With this one, 
kind of out of hand at this point. We're going to make some changes. William Ramirez is going to come in and pair with Alejandro Brand. Steven Alpazar, having played recently, a little bit knackered. Kelvin Ofori will come out. Hugo Johnson is going to get the opportunity. Uh, Sebastian Asafefa is going to be our new striker. And Daniel Torres, well, he really plays those positions. So you know what? Torres, you try the left wing. He'll come in and place the Vuitton Tusha. Typically a right winger. We're just going to put him on the other side and hope for the best. 25 minutes remaining in this match. We have a 3-0 lead on the night, which gives us a five-goal aggregate lead. A hill too big to climb for Herediano, but they are going to try. 77th minute. Final third throw in Vargas to Moyano, getting it back to Vargas, pushing it into the box. He's being shadowed, but it doesn't matter. He's able to put it past Rivas as Herediano gets one back. Well, Rivas may have pulled off a clean sheet in his debut against Santa Ana, not doing it here tonight and looking for more. Ball sent forward, picked off, though, by Hichim Bakar. He's got Ramirez, who will just lay it back for Morales as we will take our time. Enjoy the ball as much as we can. Hugo Johnson moving it forward, carrying it wide. Bit of a heavy touch. He's overtaken by Kuhn. Azufefa sending it out to the right side for Vargas. Nice switch of play for Herediano. Eight minutes remaining in regular time, and Herediano needs to make up at least a four-goal deficit in that period. Suarez, though, trying to do a really good job of that. As the ball comes back to Poros, into the middle, Arias slots it home, his fifth of the year, and it is 3-2. I'm not panicking, I'm just disappointed with you. However, we are going to hit the end of the 94 minutes added on, still needing three goals to tie it up, and Herediano would fall just that little bit short. A brace for Esteban Cordero, Calvin Ofori putting on the exclamation point. Herediano tried to make it interesting on the night with a pair of late goals in the last 15 minutes, but all of their efforts were for naught. We win on the night, 3-2, 6-3 on aggregate. We move. And just when I thought we were going to have an opportunity to see all these new and exotic teams in the continental competition in the Central American Cup semifinal, we draw... Cartagenes. And those matches are coming up in tomorrow's episode. You thought you saw enough of Herediano? Well, guess again. We've got them in the Copa Costa Rica semifinal at home, and then we have Cartagenes in the semifinals of the Central American Cup. A triple header in tomorrow's episode. I hope you were here for that. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new or you just haven't done so already. And come back tomorrow for more action in the Cups. I will see you then. Have a great day. Bye-bye.